So everyone, uh, welcome to probably the biggest uh, panel ISTE's ever seen in 40 years. Uh, and there's only one person that was born in the previous century on this panel. So everybody here is a 21st century person uh, that you're gonna hear and the ages go from around 10 to 17. So if you could just, uh, if you're attending this session, please uh, tell us your name and the chat and where you're from and uh, uh, that'll help us out a little bit. So um, basically this is a panel of students that all are considered student tech leaders. Uh, they're part of a program from a nonprofit called Generation Yes, which recently changed its name to Youth and Educators Succeeding. And they're called student tech leaders. As you are going to hear today, they have a lot of tech knowledge, but now you're hearing their leadership capabilities. So 40 years from now, and believe it or not, around 40 years ago when they had the first uh, ISTE conference, uh, I was in attendance. So it tells you how long I've been around. I've been teaching for 53 years now. Uh, it's still going. <laughs> but uh, uh, I bet no one here on the call can tell me where the first three ISTE conferences were but they were in, uh, the first one was in Iowa City, the second one was in Denton, Texas, and the third one was in Dayton, Ohio. So they were small time affairs and they've grown a huge uh, since then. So what we have today is we have students in elementary, middle and high school. So if you're from high school and we're starting off with elementary, don't leave because A, you're gonna learn a lot from these middle elementary school kids uh, and they'll shock you. Uh, but we're going to get to the middle school and the high school kids uh, later in the conversation. And also, if you're an elementary school teacher, don't drop off after the elementary school kids talk because you can learn a lot from former elementary school kids and what they're doing and pick up a lot of ideas. So that's how we're going to go. So if you have any questions during the session, after each school, we have four separate schools. We have one school, Davis Middle School from Compton, California, a suburb of L.A., and another suburb of LA, uh, Davis Middle School in Glendale. And then we have a Yuma, Arizona is represented by Palmcroft Elementary School. And then shooting across the country, we have a high school in Kanajahari, uh, which is in upstate uh, New York. So if you have any questions, we're gonna have 10 minutes for each group, have a couple minutes for questions, put them in the chat, we'll ask the students. If you have questions after the session, or like to contact us, you can scroll down on your screens and you can get information about uh, contacting us. I'm Dennis Harper, uh, the founder of this program. Uh, we've This program's been implemented now in 23, 2400 schools around the country. And uh, we're giving you kind of a representative sample. They're gonna tell you how they're helping in the pandemic, uh, et cetera. So I know you came to hear the students, so I'm gonna log off. Uh, feel free to contact us check our webpage down below, you'll see our contact information. If you wanna to talk to the teachers, notice there's none of the students, teachers who teach them at the school. If you wanna get in touch with them, uh, get in touch with us and we'll put you in contact with the teachers if you want more information. So without further ado, I'm gonna start the timer on the first group, uh, which is, by the way, I've been to every one of these schools personally. And uh, uh, the first school, Palmcroft, uh, I've been to Yuma three times and I visited Palmcroft one time. This is an amazing elementary school on the border between Mexico and California. And uh, we're going to start off with Audrey. And uh, Audrey, take it away. Hi, my name is Audrey Morocco. I'm a genuine certified STEAM technology leader. From what is in your high school working with contact elementary school i think in tech group. schools in yuma district one went remote in march 2020 we are still currently on remote i think the contact high school kids are working to assist teachers and students remotely I have assisted many of many of the teachers with applications such as 
Google Me, WebEx, Google Classroom, and many more. I've also worked with another STL to create video tutorial presentations to help and assist teachers and students, such as how to make a web clip, how to save your password, and new features that have recently been added. Now we'll introduce you to Zoe Gonzalez. Hi, my name is Zoe. I am a student technology leader in Palmcroft Elementary School. I am in fifth grade. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic shutdown, students had to take their iPads home. Um, IP, iTeam SDLs, or our student technology leaders, have realized that a lot of damage is occurring to the iPads. So we have had to make how-to videos and tutorials to stop this from happening. So we have made a how to clean your iPad video and a iPad care and rules video. Those have helped with the cleanliness and stopping damage happening. Um, we've also made new Google slide features and new Google Meet raising hand features. Those have helped uh, the students and teachers uh, during the school year. Also our Google Classroom tutorials, uh, how to join your special areas and turning in assignments. We've also made uh, we've also made how to set an alarm and uh, how to close your tabs. We are a K five school. We are an elementary school, so these have really been helping our students during the COVID nineteen pandemic. Now I'm going to introduce my partner Esley. Hi, my name is Esley. I am a student technology leader at Compact Elementary School, and I am fifth grade. During the summer, students were to bring their iPads back to school, but the student technology there kept theirs to find and explore informational websites and apps. This gave them the opportunity to teach and teach more about these new apps and informational websites. We then came across the Bitmoji Craze for Educators website, and we explored it. We learned how to create virtual classrooms by watching instructional videos. We also practiced by creating our own Bitmoji characters and our own virtual classroom. This gave us a in creating virtual classrooms. So we can then have teachers at our school when creating theirs. By continuing to explore this website, we also learned how to add links to put any videos of your desire into the virtual classrooms. When school started in August, students and teachers at our school were wondering how they were going to do their classes. That's when we taught them how their virtual classrooms would be in their Google Classrooms, which is a useful app that we use now for our school to help out during the remote learning. We were also encouraged by our instructor to get familiar with an app by the name of Jamboard. We learned it is like a digital whiteboard and includes a lot of tools such as text, naming your project, sharing it, and even changing your background. So I conducted a presentation to my teacher about the benefits of using this app for remote learning purposes. And as a student technology leader at Palmcroft, I was also given the opportunity to participate in the Family Inquiry Night, also known as Fin Night. Family Inquiry Night gives teachers and student technology leaders the chance to teach fun activities after school and remotely. During this activity, student technology leaders gave several presentations. My presentation was about the LightSpot app, which consisted in using different coding symbols to make a robot move. That is some of what we Palmcraft student technology leaders have been doing to help our school during the COVID remote learning. Okay, thank you. I just, uh, I have a couple of questions. I know, um, um, what was her name here? Zoe, Zoe Gonzalez. She's kind of famous. She's produced uh, quite a uh, nice video that has gone viral on the internet about cleaning your iPad. Uh, Zoe, do you want to tell us a little bit about that video and how you put that together? Um, yes, so making that video took about two weeks. Um, I created this movie on, uh, on iMovie, and it really helped out a lot of student 
students with keeping their iPad clean. Um, this has, it's helping and I'm, we're continuing to make more of these helpful videos. Um, it took a long time and a lot of process. Uh, it took a lot of practicing, but it worked out. Great. And when did you start, uh, any of you can answer or this from the uh, Palmcroft, when did you guys start uh, helping your teachers and learning and being part of what you call the I team or your Gen S kids? What grade level did you start doing that? So um, I started in third grade. Okay, uh, Audrey, when did you start? Third grade. Third grade as well? Yes. And then, uh, Esley, were you third grade as well or later? Yes. At Palmcroft, our I team is third grade all the way to fifth grade. Okay. So people ask me sometimes, what's the difference between high school, middle school, and elementary school? And I, my answer always is, well, the only difference is, is that the elementary school kids pick it up a lot faster and do a lot more creative work. I'm not dissing your middle and high school because I was a middle and high school teacher, but uh, they're just amazing. Do any of you uh, that are attending uh, from the show from ISTE, and like I say, I've given probably 30 ISTE presentations, and this is kind of the weirdest one, <laughs> just like everything else in 2020. But uh, any questions you can pose to this elementary school threesome? We still have a couple minutes left on the clock uh, for this school. If you want to ask a question, now's your chance. I see someone else, uh, Ruchi, said that they have uh, student leaders in their school from grades four to five. Uh, Kyle asks, is this an after school program? When do you guys meet? Anyone want to take that question on? Um, um, so before COVID-19, uh, it was uh, on Thursdays we did at seven in the morning, we'd we'd go to Mrs. Hill's classroom, our eye instructor. And then also after school, we'd have to go. But with COVID, uh, it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays after school. It starts at uh, 345. OK. Uh, we have another thing. Did you and ever also, have, when you were in third and fourth grade and when you were in school, did you have a time when you were there for kids, like a genius bar or a, a help hour for kids? or? Did you do much, a lot of what you do I know is for teachers and for administrators and for the district and you post all your nice videos and helpful stuff for adults. Um, but do you ever do any like maintenance, repairing computers, uh, helping kids out and peers? Who wants to take that one off? Audrey or Esley, do you wanna speak up to that? During the school day, we work with iPads and assist our, our peers with any technical difficulties they may have. Okay, so you're the go-to person. If you wanna see a nice video, if you scroll down, if you're attending, not the presenters here, but if you scroll down, you'll see the video uh, that is all about Yuma. It was produced by Cisco Foundation. We're a nonprofit and we get all of our funding from foundations, etc. cetera. So uh, definitely take a look at that. It's a very powerful four minute video if you haven't seen it already. And uh, you'll see a lot of the kids from the all different age levels in Yuma. Um, we have 30 schools in the Yuma uh, County that are doing uh, Gen Yes. So I'd like to see if there's any more questions here. Um, somehow I lost my timer, but uh, let me go down and see if, if I can find it. Okay, I think we're just about on time. And any last second question? Do teachers make requests on how to do this? How do you hear, how do you help teachers? Do they ask you, how do they ask you to help them, et cetera? Well, we usually are around the school helping teachers like for I team, our teacher like our eye instructor miss hale she usually assigns us to ask any teachers if they need help with anything and usually it's about turning on an apple tv or to clean their ipads and all that stuff but 
there's new tabs that we do every day um, for teachers. So yes. Yeah. And for those of you in the audience, uh, TAP is a technology assistance project. And some schools do thousands of these TAPs a year. All schools do TAPs. And uh, if you get uh, 100 TAPs and you help a teacher or help someone 100 times over the year, uh, then you get Genia certified. And uh, This school, Palmcroft Elementary School, has had four students certified, which is very unusual. Uh, Audrey's showing her T-shirt that uh, one of the things that uh, she got for being a certified student. And in the history of Gen Yes, only eight elementary school students have made this. It's mostly high school students that achieve this. Uh, and uh, so that's quite uh, good. At any rate, we had a couple other questions, but we have to move on. So I'm going to introduce Malik from Wilson Middle School. Uh, Wilson, I think Palmcroft's been doing this program for four or five years. Wilson may be the same, five or six years maybe. Uh, and uh, I'm going to introduce you to Malik. And Malik, do you want to go ahead and take off? I'll start your start your uh, clock here and uh, take it away. So I think actually Bulaji is doing the slides. So if Bulaji can get the slides show up, that would be great. If not, we can just start from here. Um, So, Blanche, are you able to get that up, or should we just start with Isabel? Why don't you just go ahead and start with Isabel, and if, if it comes up. So one thing unusual while they're trying to get that going, I'll talk about uh, Wilson Middle School a little bit. They were the first uh, middle school students in the United States that a substantial number, actually the first ones ever, to become G Suite certified with Google, which is a pretty extensive test on a lot of different applications. And they self-learned and they helped other kids learn and it was done uh, pretty much peer to peer without a class. Uh, and the kids uh, did a really good job uh, doing that uh, for they were um, the okay so I, I think Isabel do you want to just start hey, Isabel tell us about your experiences at Wilson go ahead I see Isabel you you're on mute so you're gonna have to unmute your mic um, Or I can unmute your mic as well. Um, sorry. It started. Uh, it's the... Hello, my name is Isabel Magakian. This is my second semester in Wilson Tech. Um, due to COVID, we didn't get to continue class in person at the end of the school year. We also started this school year online. Although we were not together in class, Wilson. Wilson's tech student technology leaders are still able to get many things accomplished. We've assisted students, staff, and community during this challenging time in education. Um, uh, during distance learning last school year, our school received a grant from Verizon. Verizon generously provided Chromebooks and wireless connection for each student. As student technology leaders, we are learning the Google curriculum, taking the Google certification test with the goal of teaching the other students at Wilson. Um, being able to use the Google apps will allow the students to utilize technology to its full potential. The student tech leaders also help lighten the load by learning apps, coding programs, robotics in order to, in order to teach the other technology classes. The, student, the technology is allowing us to work as productive as we can. Um, hello everybody, I'm Malik Dayton. I've been in tech for around a year now, um, but two semesters. I've been in Genius for three months. Um, the Genius program has taught me a lot about how to not just help someone, but teach them. It's not just about showing someone how to do something, it's letting them learn how to do it and, and having them continue to do it after you're done helping them. 
Um, so as we are student technology leaders, uh, which, which means that we take some of the burden off of our tech teachers. Um, so a lot of the things we've done during this distance learning um, are helping people with, uh, helping teachers with Zooms and Google Classroom, two main things we use a lot, and the whole G Suite. Um, and that is to help ease them into our new style of learning during distance and, and COVID. Hello, my name is Daniel Penn. I've been a part of Gen yes for two years now at Wilson Middle School. Studying technology has allowed me to learn 3D printing, coding, and much more. With 3D printing, uh, I made PP at masks for COVID uh, with a team of four people last summer. We managed to make 700 masks. In order to print this many, I had to manage the settings and my time to print such a quantity. We created a headband that would uh, have a, a clear protector to the front of it. 3D printing and technology have just had such a big uh, impact on my life so far. It let me learn CAD design, Fusion 360, Blender, and much more. Thank you uh, for letting me present today. I appreciate it very much. Okay, who's next? Um, I'm next. My presentation isn't loading. Okay. Hello, my name is Samville and I'm a member of Gen Yes. I was been interested in technology since I was 10 and Wilson Middle School gave me the opportunity um, <clears throat> to learn many things and many programs. I'm sorry, my Wi-Fi connection is really bad. It's just constantly crashing me. Now you're coming through well, just carry on. Whoops, we may have lost them. Well, one out of 16 is not bad. Yes. <laughs> I think there's one more speaker um, from Wilson. Yep, that's me. So Malik, have you spoken? After Samji Balaji. Balaji, have you spoken? No, I'm after Samji. Okay, go ahead. You were so the first speaker. And, yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Balaji, and I'm here from Woodrow Wilson's Genius Tech Team and USD CTE team. And as an SDO, one of my main jobs is to take the pressure of teachers and help students with tech problems. And that is what I've been doing for the past three months. And I've been a genius only for the past three months. And I've been making screencastify videos, how to videos for, sp for specific apps and websites. And I've been doing tech support, which is like troubleshooting and customer support using Gmail, Hangouts, and Zoom. And one of the main goals for me and for my class is to get genius certified. And it was a pleasure presenting at ISTE. Thanks a lot. Okay. Are there any other speakers from Glendale we haven't heard from yet? Not from Woodrow, and we're open to questions. Yeah, I have a question here that someone asked. What were some of the challenges during COVID times for you doing these, especially you students who are used to doing this uh, at uh, last year and the year before? In a school setting. Whoops. Um, who wants to take that one on? Uh, Malik or Balaji? What are some of the challenges? What are some of the hurdles, the problems that you had to figure out that are specific to teaching at a distance and helping teachers during the COVID time? One of like the main problems, like and biggest problems that is still continuing is Zoom. And we're having like big problems. Like some students don't have the option to turn their camera on. And some students don't know how to speak. Like their microphone goes off and on. Zoom glitches. 
they get black screens and a lot of that is happening and the second biggest challenge is like google classroom some students are like having trouble turning in work attaching links docs so on and so forth so sdls as as an SDL, our job is to like make videos, how to videos and communicate with students and help them like solve these problems. Okay, anybody else want to pitch in on that one? I, there were a couple other questions here. Let me ask them. Um, Kyle asks, who determines what tools you use and topics you use and what projects and taps you do? Is this generated by teachers or do you have some leeway on what things you learn and how you do it and who you help. Maybe let's hear some someone besides Malik. How about Samuel, Sambel, or maybe Daniel, Isabel? Hello. Just Isabel, you want to just jump right in there on that question? Who determines what you learn, how you help teachers, what apps um, you use? Go ahead. It, is my my audio working? Yes, it's um, working. We hear you. We can hear you, Isabel. Go ahead. Okay. It, yeah, sorry, it wasn't connecting for a second. Um, usually, our teacher determines what we're working on. Um, so, by teacher, you mean your genius teacher, or just other teachers you have um, during the day? Uh, when you're usually on your teacher determines what we're working on. Uh, but um, a lot other times it might be something specific that we school in the district is doing, but most will be our teacher or it'll be like if a, 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 another teacher in like from a different class. Okay, yeah, our, our general teacher. Uh, we have another question I'm trying to understand here from uh, Rushi saying, do you have any essential mm -hmm. Is, I think agreements audios. when it comes to using your devices on the internet. I'm not, uh, I don't so, quite understand yeah. that. Yeah, there's actually like essential agreements in the sense Um, this year we actually got like a Verizon Chromebook that was only for studies and all that during um distance learning. And we have certain like agreements in the sense um certain websites are blocked and we are not like supposed to go there and we have like certain um restrictions in this device and also when coming back to the problem um sometimes the chromebook gets heated up and due to weather conditions and all of those stuff it gets heated up and just like blacks out so that is one of the biggest problems that we keep solving Okay, well, let's move on from the northern suburb of Los Angeles to the south side of Los Angeles, the southern suburb, Compton Unified School District and Davis uh, Middle School. So Davis, I think, is uh, Compton's been doing this program for, I guess we started that Victoria, uh, ooh, God, six, seven years ago. Um, the next school and last school in New York actually started this program 18 years ago. So some of the schools we've had been doing this program for a long time. But uh, Compton's one of our real flagship schools. Uh, and uh, let me turn that over straight away and I'll reset the timer for uh, Mark, Mark Sandoval. Go ahead, Mark. Um, okay, um, let me get this thing working for a quick time. All right. So, um, hello, my name is Mike Sandoval. I am a student tech team leader at Davis Middle School. We are also extremely thankful to Dr. Dennis Harper and NES for their support throughout the years. And before I talk about myself, I would like to int introduce my teammates, Paulina, Uriah, William, and Adrian, who are all different in their own manner. For example, Paulina is a person who composes, Adrian is a visionaire, Uriah is an idealist, and William is the craftsman. The team I see is like superheroes, which we're somewhat not. From time to time, we do have our falls, but we always get up with great enthusiasm. The, bit th the best thing about us is that we never back down from anything. We have always tried to go beyond our expectations. We have moved beyond the traditional approach of pro providing technical support for our school. We are more active in promoting student activism and seeking solutions to solve diversity. 
For example, we have provided students voices in which they can express how they felt about online education. Oh, okay. Now, now that you have some background about our team, I'll introduce myself more properly. Um, hi, my name is Mark Sandoval. I'm a student tech team leader at Davis Middle School. For the past two years, I've been learning the crafts of the great Yoda. Uh, no, actually, I'm joking around. I've actually assisted training students on how to use Scratch. I have mentored students from Santa Monica on the benefits of STEM and how it's in the future for us humans. Also, I'm currently working on an app prototype that's placed in Mars Colony. My teammate and I were discussing an idea we are able to able to speak to the Martians. It's a translator for both humans and aliens to communicate with each other. All these experiences were made thanks to Gen yes. I feel like Gen yes was meant for me because I'm a very dedicated person who likes to explore. Well, enough about me. I give all attention to Paulina, the, the composer. Paulina. Hi, I'm Paulina Barriga, and this is my first year with the Davis Middle School Tech Team. I'm in seventh grade, and one of my jobs is to provide technical support for my school and parents, especially during the time of COVID-19. For example, I assisted my mom in the cooking shows when she made an appearance. I helped with Zoom, and I controlled the camera. To be a student tech team leader is to be responsible, willing to help, and be kind to others. So I think what I enjoy most about the tech team is that we get to be helpful. An example of this is when my when I help my team understand how to use Apple Clips and my how-to video is on the Davis Middle School website for anybody if they need help with Apple Clips. COVID-19 has changed my way of learning because of all the apps and websites we could use during distance learning. Sometimes the team gets to work on important issues like when we created virtual homes or co spaces, but our homes were not normal homes. They addressed equity and followed the nation's sustainability goal. Also, recently, my team is exploring what fashion might look like on a similar future Mars mission. My team and I are looking and discussing how online shopping might be on Mars. By doing so, we are creating future fashion designs and we are designing an app prototype using the app Keynote. Now, I would like to introduce my teammate, Uriah. Hello, my name is Uri White, and I'm an eighth grade student at Davis Middle School. I appreciate that Jen has provided an opportunity for us to get a Google certification and helping my school and community. I am a third year student tech leader, and what I like about the tech team is the fact that we can get multiple learning opportunities to meet with professionals from different fields that other students would normally get. COVID has changed my way of learning by giving me more online options to learn about new programs. And I feel happy about having a voice in these important issues because people will be able to listen to what I have to say. Some of the things I've done would be participating in creating an awareness video for gun violence and a video about my experience on life in COVID. I also made a video giving STEM advice for our kids at Santa Monica. Of one of my projects, included building the exterior of a 12-foot model of a Galileo shuttlecraft and use green screen to help do a stimulation of the transporter from a show called Star Trek for Steam Fest. Thanks to the team, I've learned new skills such as programming sparrows and building dancing robots. Currently, my newest project involves me being part of a team on a Mars colony stimulation where we discuss, where we discuss race differences by creating an app prototype using Keynote. The app is a translator that helps with alien species relationships in Mars to help communicate and maybe create bonds with them. The tech team is important to me because it taught me new technology skills to use in the future. And now I'd like to introduce my teammate, Will Liam. Go ahead, William Chavez, go ahead. Can you hear me? Hi, my name is William Travis and I'm in Davis Middle School. This is my second year in the tech team and I'm in seventh grade. I enjoy being on the tech team, especially times like when I created a video of Mr. Gonzalez with him as a dancer. Another fun thing is 
making virtual reality events like Mark and I did. We did an Are You Smarter Than Six Reader in Metaverse. I have participated in providing student voices by participating in a video, bringing awareness to students' experiences during COVID. Being a student activist, a part of Ganyes, can help you learn new things and can help your community. I've created a virtual sustainable home in co spaces. My virtual home was made from mycelium and it used renewable energy sources like a great water system and solar panels. In real life, I had been part of the team that grew real mycelium funguses. Then we created blocks to build a wall to show that we can build homes from mycelium. As part of student activism, I have discovered I have a voice in bringing awareness of gun violence in a video. Me and my teammate are currently working on a scratch project that helps awareness of bees. We want to ensure we don't kill off one of the main pollinators. In this game, you play as a bee that can hire a human and, and show how bees and humans can work together. This can help life on land and bring more food around. The tech team is important to me because it opens gates for me that would help me succeed in life. I would like to introduce to you my teammate, Adrian. Yo, Adrian, couldn't help myself on that one. <laughs> I think this uh, presenters are too young to remember that movie. But Adrian, are you there? I guess maybe we were having trouble with her logging in earlier. Okay, well, we'll see if she pops up here pretty soon. Um, as you can see, these uh, students from Compton are really doing a wonderful job. I know uh, they've helped bring along other districts nearby. Los Angeles County is the most populous county in the United States. Uh, so there's lots of school districts. And I know that uh, we've taken some Gen S kids from uh, schools in Compton and had them working with uh, and bringing other school districts and other schools along. I remember once uh, the Beverly Hills School District was asking me, uh, you know, we were going to train them. I said, I'm going to get some kids and they're going to come help me train your new schools to do the program. And they said, well, where are you going to get the kids? And I said, they're going to bring them from Compton. They said, you're bringing kids from Compton to Beverly Hills to teach Beverly Hills kids? I said, you bet. And so we've done some really cool things and they're a real leading district now in technology uh, in the uh, nation, thanks to the wonderful teachers there as well. Uh, so we have a few questions. Um, what's, uh, uh, what's the most common support you have to help other students and teachers? These are questions for Davis Middle School kids. Uh, what's the most common type of things you do to help teachers and your fellow students? Mark, you want to take that one? Or you've been around for a while. You're the lead honcho there. Turn your mic on. and uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Did you get the question? Uh, OK. Uh, great. Yeah, um, one question. To say. Uh, one of the most um, common support we have for the t students or teachers is actually um, the troubleshoot on the iPad, which um, there's uh, multiple. Um, so, um, uh, sorry, forgive me. I can't put it in words. Um, uh, basically, uh, the troubleshoot is um, resetting the iPad because there's. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, what's called the app? Um, self service. There it goes. And we have a lot of troubleshooting on self service, so we have to reset the iPads. And we have to wipe it clean. Okay. Any other questions here? Let me see. Uh, what else? Here's a question here from Kyle. How do you get involved in the program at your school? How did you get involved? What made you become a uh, student tech leader in your school? Um, so actually, you yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, how I got involved was because my cousin, um, he was an eighth grader during the time. I was a seventh grader and he told um, Mr. Gonzalez, my student tech team uh, leader teacher, 
uh, that if I'm able to join. So I took the chance and from there on, I enjoyed it. So how about some of the rest of you, uh, William, Adrian, Paulina, Uriah? Well, how did you become a Gen Yes student? Uriah, why don't you start off? Um, I became a student tech leader from being inspired from one of my previous teammates because they were going to it and like they were telling me all these cool things about it. So I wanted to join and I joined and now I like it. So yeah. Another question here is how do you think, you know, this program has changed you since you did start the program? Maybe some of you have been in it for two or three years. William Chavez, do you have a, I guess you're just a recent uh, joiner though, aren't you? Who else? Adrian, Paulina, do you wanna chime in? How do you see your growth in technology, et cetera? I guess that's a tough question. <laughs> any rate, I think our two minutes time for questioning this school is just about over. But once again, we'll have a little time at the end if you have uh, attendees have a further questions. So our final school, last but not least, is our one high school. And hopefully all you students uh, who are participating in this uh, can learn from all levels. Uh, I remember I was um, teaching a group of high school teachers in, uh, uh, from different schools in New York State. And I had some elementary school come, kids come to help teach the session and to help teach these teachers to start Gen Yes. As soon as these high school teachers saw the elementary school teachers, they said, oh my God, this is gonna be a long day. Uh, but at the end of the day, they were saying, wow, this I remember now why I went into teaching. Uh, they couldn't believe how the younger generations and the younger the kids are, the sharper they are. And, and uh, so watch out high school kids. So we have two of our superstar kids from Kana Jahari High School. As I mentioned before, this school has been doing Gen Yes probably close to 20 years now. Uh, so they have a real rich, well-developed program and famous around the state. Uh, it's kind of a famous school anyway. But uh, let me start out. Uh, James, do you want to start off here in this or Vincenzo? Um, certainly, I'll start off. I'm just trying to get everything set up. Okay, can you all see my, my stream right now? Yes. Okay, awesome. Oops, it's kind of coming in and out. Uh, how about now, is everything all good? Yeah, everything looks good. Okay, so this is our computer science pathway. Uh, my name is James Davio. I'm a senior at the Canada Harry High School. And Vincenzo and I are just going to tell you all a little bit about our computer science pathway and how the Gen Yes program has helped us. So the computer science internship has used Gen Yes to grow from a small club to a much larger credit bearing course. And I'm going to hand this off to my pal, Vincenzo. Oh, it looks like we lost Vincenzo. His picture's not on here now. Oh, okay. So you'll have to go to plan B here. <laughs> he's been on here for an hour waiting to speak, and now he's not on. But he'll log on soon, I'm sure. Go That's ahead. Okay. Oh, wait, did he just come in? I don't know. I don't see him here now. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll continue where he left off. Now the program has become more of the central hub of, of the computer science pathway to graduation. And this is a little 3D model that Vinny created. Well, not a 3D model. It is a 3D image that he took of our library where all the magic happens. Um, if it will load. You can move the camera around. It's just a neat little 3D representation of our library. Our program has several fulfillments 
that must be fulfilled every year, which includes your daily task, your weekly work log, your community service, the one last night you taught, as well as your final project and your online portfolio. And this is, this is what my portfolio looks like. And to the right is my project, which is an arcade I've been building for the past few years, which is a Raspberry Pi based project using the RetroPie operating system. We've turned the Gen Yes program into a pathway. The requirements to pass as a CSI for a freshman at the end of the year are your Gen Yes certification, which is 100 taps, 10 teachers that you assisted, your 15 team taps, as well as the 25 hours that, of support that you've given, your online portfolio, and the Maker Fair presentation that you gave at the very end of the year. Uh, I'm back. Are you back? Yeah, sorry, my computer crashed. All right, you're all good. You can take over from here then. Uh, yes, I can. So these are the requirements for fresh for sophomores, juniors, and seniors as well. So in addition to the uh, to CSI, you're also enrolled in some other classes when you join the pathway, such as digital photography or computer applications. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, we led an experiment at the Arkell Hall Retirement Home to see if video games had any positive or negative effect on preventing Alzheimer's. We were able to meet together and we could teach each other different lessons. And as you can see in the middle, there's my friend Luke Dillenbeck teaching all of the CSI interns how to clean out and maintain 3D printer. Um, we also have to teach a neighboring school district we also taught a neighboring school district. In this picture here on the right, it's me and some of my other colleagues uh, teaching the fourth graders the Makey Makeys. We also taught seventh graders while we were there. We also teach two school districts each year. Last year, not teach two districts, we take a field trip to two school districts each year. Last year, we went to the SUNY Albany. Uh, an amp drone amphitheater, which was an old skin gym that got repurposed into a drone flying area. So aside from visiting the amphitheater, we've also visited the Rome Military Labs, the Precision Valve Associates, Anderson Instruments, the Center of Gravity in Troy, which is Mrs. Jones's inspiration for our makerspace, the SUNY Polytechnic Utica campus, and the College of St. Rose. My favorite is definitely when we went to the Warner Brothers games. I loved seeing the process of how they built video games and all the different software and modeling software that they used. In addition to teaching us, we, we have to teach a lesson each year. Last year, me and my colleagues, like I said before, taught the fourth graders and seventh graders the Makey Makeys. In addition to teaching the students, the CSIs have also taught teachers. Um, for some reason, the videos won't load, but one of our CSIs a couple of years ago, Scott Snyder, taught 40 librarians and 40 tech teachers how to use Sphero and Ozobot robots and how to incorporate them into their day to day lessons. In addition to uh, younger grade levels, we also teach all grade levels in all classes too. Such as last year, I taught the ninth graders in biology about the uh, brain and its hormones using a Google Cardboard app called InMind VR2. In a process that should have taken well over a month, the CSI is able to roll out 500 Chromebooks in only two weeks. In that period, we unboxed all the devices and cases, we tested them, placed them in cases, inventoried them in Google Sheets, numbered and distributed them. And little did we know how important this would be in the future once the COVID-19 pandemic really hit the states. So what else are we doing during COVID? The CSI members have worked collectively to help prevent the spread of the virus. We have a page on our website that has instructions to perform different tasks in the Google Suite. And this video that won't load for some reason is by one of our CSIs named Connor Ambridge, who did a tutorial on how to rotate different objects in Google Slides.
We also like to clean stuff to keep people safe from the virus. Last year, we every day we came in, we cleaned the cro the computers in the computer lab. This year, there's not going to be any. There isn't any computer in the computer lab. So instead, we're wiping down the tables, iPads, bots, and drones every day that were there. Uh, we also learn how to fix Chromebooks for the hundreds of students that use them each day. On the right there, it was me and the I, someone from IT teaching us how to disassemble the Chromebook. CSI prospects Connor Ambridge and Skyward Ferreira both created a presentation to Mr. Bettino and Mr. DePaulo, the technology administrators for our district, a proposal on how to or on why we should have licenses for the Game Maker Studio, which is a software used for making video games. They drafted their um, your proposal, and it was approved. And I believe yesterday we actually got the licenses for the software, and we'll be beginning very soon. In November of last year, I helped launch a campaign with Mrs. Jones, my CSI teacher, on why we should have an esports team. I presented to the district why we should have an esports team, and it was very successful. So our our second season will be beginning next year, early next year in January, and we will be playing Rocket League, Fortnite, and League of Legends. So how is this a curriculum enhancer? Well, now that we have an esports team, the SUNY Morrisville college team, college esports team, would like to play against us in the coming months. We've been invited to the Global Game Jam, which is a two day long competition to see who can design the best game in under two days. We will also be launching a coding course in the coming years, which I won't be able to take part in that because I'll be graduated by them. And our CSI interns are also designing their own COVID-friendly tech lessons, such as one of our uh, classmates, Autumn Ardawini, who designed a lesson for English on the book Night, which you're reading using the Ceros, which are remote-controlled robots. The drone lessons led by Michaeli Martin are COVID-friendly and do not require any physical contact to be made. In the left image, you can see is a drone safety sheet that she prepared in, in a very professional manner. It is a formal lesson plan that she and Mrs. Jones both drafted up. It has several DSD standards that were being used. And unfortunately, the images or the videos won't load, but they were, the one on the top was a demonstration on how the drones were being used and the one on the bottom would have been in like a bird's eye view of our high school taken with a drone. Um, each of our CSI interns are also doing a special project, such as one of our interns made our new CSI logo, which are going to be printed on the circuit maker uh, on T-shirts. Some of our other interns are even doing things like making physical playing cards or teaching teachers that use breakout EDU online. Or one of our other interns, Aiden, is making his own magic mirror. Of course, none of this could have been made possible without Jen Yes. So thank you all, and thank you for We're listening. Taking questions now. Okay, we have a couple of questions here. Uh, uh, can you give a little more detail on how you utilize your talents uh, with librarians? How you help librarians at your school? Um, well, our our only two librarians are Mrs. Jones, and we originally had Mrs. Moyer, but she retired earlier this year. So whenever they come to us with a problem, they'll, they'll send us an email and whatever problem it is, it's typically, it's typically with, with one of the Chromebooks. We'll figure everything out. We'll contact the IT professionals in the district if necessary. And within, within a day or so, everything should be figured out. Usually, one of the biggest problems they come to us with is why isn't the Chromebook charging or why can't we turn it on? Why isn't the screen working? 
another common problem I sometimes have with Chromebooks is that buttons don't do certain things, such as the backslash will make an at symbol instead. Okay, so I think we're getting close to the end. I think we pulled off something that it's hard to pull off <laughs> uh, with two or three people without people coming from all over the country. But luckily, you're all 21st century born, 21st century people. And so we, you figured it out uh, in, in a good way. I know that I was a former, I was around at the beginnings of ISTE a long time ago. I started an organization called Q in California along with four other people. And uh, I've been on the ISTE board of directors and I fought a lot to get students on the ISTE board and I never was succeeded successful there. Uh, I had to work years to get uh, students to appear at ISTE allowed to, at the actual physical conferences. So it's been an uphill battle, even though K-12 education uh, is made up of 92% students and only 4% teachers. So it's uh, nice to see that we hear these young future leaders uh, coming out. I was looking at the participant list and noticing that some people are from Riverside. We have a really good district called Valverde School District near Riverside. And um, Moreno Valley is another district that's coming on board. So, and of course, I see some people from LA Unified. So you have definitely Glendale and Compton you can visit. And we've done some really cool projects in LA. And uh, you can read about them on our website uh, uh, there. So uh, if there are any last second questions, once again, I uh, you know some of the things are in the tote. Some people ask about the Kana Jahari presentation that that's not on our tote bag. Maybe Victoria, you can work with uh, Vincenzo and uh, James to get that slideshow and then put it up on our tote bag. So check that out later. So participants, if they want that slideshow also, you can contact us at support at Gen, you know, our support uh, email address, support at yesk12.org. And uh, Tell us you want it, and we'll we'll make sure you get a copy of that if you're interested. So, any last second questions in the chat here, or any last comments from the panel? This has got to be the biggest panel, at least this year in ISTE. And uh, it always kills me when people say, "Wow, I went to this kid panel, and it was the best thing I heard at ISTE." And it's like, "Yeah, well, we need to have more and more kids uh, presenting at ISTE and start getting." the future, their energy, their expertise. And that's what I've worked 50 years trying to do as a teacher and a college professor at UC Santa Barbara for a few years and other uh, jobs that I've had. So um, let me look and see Victoria saying, yeah. And uh, if you want to get in touch with any of the Victoria is our president. Victoria actually started herself as a seventh grade student. We hired her in the eighth grade. That was 12 years ago. She's got a college degree. She's, uh, 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 and uh, so now she's our president of the company. So Victoria was just saying in the chat that uh, if you want to connect with any of the hundreds of schools that we have doing this program, let us know. If you want to connect with any teachers, uh, that teach these four schools. We're happy to give you their email. They're happy to discuss or, or uh, uh, contact any of these students. You can't contact them directly, but through the teachers, you could. So once again, let me thank the panel, the students. As you can tell, they spent a lot of time. They made this happen. And Victoria, for all her work and efforts on this. And uh, we're one minute early. This is the first one I've been to. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of sessions, but. Here's one that actually ended on time. <laughs> so I'll stick around for about five minutes if you have a few questions for me uh, in the chat group for attendees. Otherwise, uh, feel free to contact me personally, and I'm happy to uh, discuss that. And the same goes with all you students. Uh, the last eight years I've worked for Gen yes, I did on a completely voluntary basis. I put in 25,000 hours of volunteer time, but this sessions like this and seeing what happens with some of the genius classes is my pay uh, and what I do all this work for. So 
thanks a lot and uh, hope to see uh, some of you again uh, in the future. Bye. All you guys in the group can wave goodbye to the participants and attendees.